Uh, please say your name, how old, and how long have you lived in Tucson? Okay, my name is Yen Hilo. I also know as Gary. I have lived here since 1948. I came here to go to school. I went to uh, kindergarten one C to learn the language. And then I attend school here all the way uh, up to the University of Arizona. I have attended uh, three years at the university a major in civil engineering. My grandfather came to the United States, go back to China, and then uh, he was able to take his four sons, brought them to the United States. But my grandfather had one more story that i like to mention. By the time he built the Southern Pacific Railroad, which is in Tucson, he worked for the railroad. After he finished the railroad, the guy in charge of the coolie uh, asked him, you guys want to stay in America? And one of the guys that learned a little bit of English said, yeah, who is not a railroad to be built? He said, no, Southern Pacific is the last railroad to be built. But if you want to stay, I can get some authorization from the governor uh, and from the government to let you stay here. They, these guys that were in charge of the coolie were so smart, knowing that the Chinese was a very nonviolent worker. They were very obedient to the law. They wanted them to stay to settle the wild, wild west. They give them a little ID, that little ID today known as the green card. So my grandfather had a green card, went back to China, brought his first son over, and uh, my father is the number three son. So first, second uncle, my father, and my fourth uncle, they all settled down here in Tucson. So my father was also drafted in the service. But before he got drafted, he went back to China and got married. He has two boys. He came back in 1935. 33 to 34, and then the war broke out. Oh, there's another little story. As the war broke out with, the, uh, with Japan, the American amb uh, Secretary of State asked the Chinese ambassador, would you give me permission to draft the Chinese subject that is living here in the United States? And the Chinese ambassador looked at him and said, we are ally, aren't we? So yeah, we're ally. So he signed the paper, give the American uh, drafting ball, whatever, it, to draft the Chinese subject into the service. So my father went in as a servant. He is a translator for the U.S. Army. That's why I got that picture over there. You know. So anyway, after the war was over. Uh, the United States had my father a naturalized citizen paper. He went back to China, brought my brother and myself, and then by the time he stayed in China, almost a year, my baby sister was born, you know, and then we come back to the United States, we come to Tucson and settle down here in Tucson. During the war, I had seen my mother cry. You know, I was a little kid at eight, seven and eight. I understand how a woman feel without a husband. I understand. Never, I gave my mother a hug, and and then in her mind, it's like she holding my father. You know, so consequently, I knew that. So by the time I was over, uh, we got work that he was coming back to China. Uh, can you tell me a story between the relationship between your dad and you? Well, okay, as I, as I was excited that my father was coming back, I was playing lion uh, with that lion club in the Nala village. And then when I finally returned home, my mother drunk me to get a little plate, cut up some uh, brown sugar. There was like six of them brown sugar. I supposed to take it to my father give it to him. And he take one, eat it, and he take one, give it to me. That's how I met my father. I mean, that's the first greeting at 12 years old. Yeah, I, I, I almost cry when I think about the, those, those wonderful moments. 
I was a little guy. My father was like 180 pounds. He almost looked like a giant. You know, Ch Chinese is only about like 110 pounds. They're not very big. My father was 180 pounds. He looked like a giant to me. So all this time at 12 years old, I never have a father. I only saw a picture of my father. I know that coming to America, I have to learn a completely new culture. In fact, the first book I learned was uh, Spanish. And I was living in South Tucson by 26th Street and South 6th. When making call me, he said, Chinito, Chinito. And call me Chino. And then I went home and asked my father, why you call me Chino? And Chino in Chinese mean pig. And my father said, no, no, don't get mad, because when he called you Chino, it is a Mexican name for Chinese, so don't get mad at the guy. So I learned from the very beginning that the language sometimes has a different meaning from a different nationality, so I never got in trouble from the language uh, barrier. That's what I did. Uh, as I go to school, I wanted to be a civil engineer, and but I was failing English. Somehow I understand the English language, but I fail English. I keep flunking it about five times, and the first year I make honor roll, but the second year I couldn't make it. The third year I couldn't make it. I was almost uh, my grade was pushing to the point where I almost could not graduate. My grade was getting off a low. So I decided to get married. After I got married, I was hoping that I might settle down and, and study better. Well, it didn't work out. After I got married, the next thing you know what, my wife expecting a baby and... Okay, after I got married, I mean, I made my wife a little promise and I proposed her in Hong Kong. I said, you look at me, I'm not a handsome guy, uh, I'm dark, I am not very smart, I mean I know most something, but I'm not very intelligent. Uh, you look at me, what you see is what you get, okay? Now if you marry me, I promise, I'm a hard worker, I promise I will have a roof over my head and have food in the table. I mean, I don't promise you uh, all the luxury and all the uh, jewelry that other people have, but I promise you some basic uh, necessity, necessity of life. And she looked at me and she said, I marry you. Then I said, well, I got another uh, thing I can do. I have always worked in a grocery store while I was going to school. I know how to run a convenience store. You know, I know how to do the uh, vegetable, how to cut the meat, how to stocking, and so on. You know, I say, if you don't like it, we can go back to Houston, open up a little convenience store. I think you and I could make a living. In about five minutes, she said, I like that. So the rest of history. So we came back to Tucson and and, and, and I, uh, and by the way, I, I was in the core engineer. I learned to do a little building. So we bought a home. We built. We bought a home like this face that way. And then we built a little section like this, like a C section. Open a door here and a window here, and connect it to the house. We make a make a uh, make a store out of it. We run it for 31 years and, and retire. Uh, what didn't make you see Mi casita in Spanish, my little house. Mi casita. You know, my little house. Now, you're given part of land, okay, and you build your home. Now, this is the truth. People build one room and a toilet, and then they make some money, they add another room, make a, a day room. And then, if they make some money, they build another room, make a living room. They add little one room at a time with the money that they earn from work. I mean, in those days, there were a lot of people who had that uh, kind of tray, uh, that kind of experience. Uh, they don't buy a house like today. People build a nice home, you buy it, you sign for a mortgage to that. They would call me cachita. Now, you build a one bedroom home with a toilet, okay? 
the start work, and then you add a little kitchen, then you add a little day room, then you add a second room. That's how they do it. He said, uh, you name Gary? I said, yeah. He said, you know how to play lion? I said, well, no, I don't know how to play the lion, but I did play the tail when I was a kid in China. So he said, good, coming out, we're going to organize the lion club. So that's when we started organizing club. That was uh, about 1975. Or well, 1970, 75, we organized the club uh, with him being the, the head uh, coach and I am his assistant. We teach a lot of kids uh, 12 to 14 years old to play lion. We taught him and they got done high school, got done college, and they graduate, they disappear. We have to teach another group. We taught about four to five group. How do you want people to remember you as? nowadays and what would you want people to say about you? What I want people to remember me on? Well, I think first my family is important. After my family, I think the society is important, especially the Chinese Culture Center. I almost donate time, allow time for that wholeheartedly.